Genesis chapter 29. And we've been talking about healing emotional wounds. Genesis chapter 29. And we're going to go back to our text. And our text is really about Leah. Genesis chapter 29 in verse 31. Yeah. Genesis chapter 29 in verse 31. The Bible says this. It says, And when the Lord saw Leah was hated, he opened her womb. So guess what? It was not just... You know, sometimes you can feel something happen to you that is not true. The Bible says God actually agreed that Leah was hated. Sometimes you're not hated, you only feel hated. When you talk with the person, you say, oh, no, 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 I didn't really do that to you. It was just your perspective of what happened. But God himself looked at between all of them and God knew that Leah was hated. So it was not a figment of our imagination. Sometimes, let me say this quickly, because you feel a certain way does not mean it is true. You need to know that. That's the truth. Because some, some of you feel as if someone does not like you. And that's why, look at me everybody. One of the best things you can bring to your relationship is to ask questions. Most relationships are ruined because people assume a lot. So you'll be like, you'll be like you're hurting me. Why are you hurting me? You know, he might not even be hurting you. She might not be hurting you is to ask her, do you know that this hurts me? And is there any reason why you do this? That's to give a total paradigm. Sometimes, so for example, let me use my wife. My wife comes to a family, they use, they use strong words against each other, strong words. So they can call themselves, hmm, big head, stupid. Not that they are fighting, no, just play, play. In fact, there's a word in my wife's family called buzu. I don't know what buzu means, but I, I know it's a, it's a good word. So, you know, they will just say, you know, they will even say to their parents, buzu. Oh, that's nice, you know. <laughs> but the kind of family where I came from were very particular in the words. So, when we got married, my wife would just throw those words like that. You know, when you're in marriage, you'll be absorbing it, like, mm, mm, mm. after some time, you start reacting, you start reacting, you start reacting. Then I felt, no, 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 no. Then, then, I began to have a conversation. Then I paid attention that that was how it was in their family. I mean, I don't know what I'm talking about like that. You know, some families, people, some families, when they are playing, they shout at each other. So sometimes, before you conclude that someone is doing something to you, Maybe you want to ask a question. Let me give you another powerful lesson. Always see life as a lesson. Pick up the lessons and move on. Always see life as a school, rather. Pick up the lessons and move on. And let me say something to you. Everybody listen to this. Life is a school and it's trying to teach you lessons. If you fail the lesson, you will go back. It will teach you the lesson in a tougher way. Did you hear what I said? If you fail the lesson of life, you will be on that same spot. And life will teach you the lesson. It will teach you the same lesson, but in a tougher way. If you fail it again, you will still be there. It will teach you the lesson of life in a tougher way. And many of you, what you don't know is that because life functions on principles, life is trying to teach you the same lesson and you're not listening. He's trying to teach you that you don't date this way. He's trying to teach you that you don't talk this way. You don't treat people this way. For example, some of you have lost people that really love you. And it's one reason. It's the way you treat them. It's the way you treat them. Some people are not just, some people are not just lovable. They don't know how to respond to love. I've seen people that when you love them, they misbehave. They either didn't take you for granted, they just begin to misbehave. And the reason why is that love is not familiar to them. Let me give an example. If you give, so who does not eat salad here? Just wave your hands, let me see. Good. If you give someone that does not eat salad, salad, he's going to make a mess of the food. Yes or no? He's going to start saying, mm, he's going to be looking for, just to make a mess of it. The reason why is that the person is not familiar with what the salad is. The same thing, if you love someone that is not used to love, they will make a mess of the love. They will make a mess of it. And it's not because they are doing a bad thing. They are not just used to being loved. 
Let me give you a more common example. There was a study done about people that win lottery. That with, no matter how much they win, within three years, they become more broke than when they had money. So there was a man that won, I think, five million pounds or one million pounds, something like that. By the fifth year, he was more broke than before he won the money. I saw say, how does that happen? They will keep losing the money until the money comes to that level of intelligence. That's why you don't change a man from the outside, you change it from what? From the inside. Let me tell you why a lot of relationship counseling does not work. Let me tell you why. A lot of marriage and relationship, and this is why someone says you talk relationship. I say I don't. A lot of relationship and marriage do not work. A lot of relationship and marriage counseling do not work. And this is the reason why. Because when you listen to them, they keep telling you what you should do. So people do things without changing how they think. And what you do without changing how you think is useless. Because number one, you do it for a short time. Number two, you'll be inconsistent. Number three, you will regret what you're doing because you don't want to do it. And number four, there's no real transformation. So they will say, you know what, when he comes, just kneel down and greet him. It's not about kneel down and greet him. It's not about cuckoo for him. You say, I have a lot of sex. It's not about having a lot of sex. There is a way you really think. So they tell a girl that's been raped. They say, uh-uh, what's wrong with you? You should be having sex with your husband. When he comes this week, have sex with him. So the girl goes home, have sex the whole week. And guess what? She's looking for a way not to have sex. So, as soon as the whole week is done, she goes on break. Because you've not ultimately, ultimately fixed the way she's thinking. You've not dealt with the issue. This is what reduces the issues. It's a mentality. So, what are you learning? Life is a school. And everything that happens to you is a lesson. If you know this, you will know how to move on in life easily. All the guys that broke your heart, they taught you a lesson. All the girls that broke your heart, they taught you a lesson. Let's get some lessons they taught you. Do you agree they taught you a lesson? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They taught you a lesson. What lesson? Chuma, let's start from you. You have the microphone. Yeah, Chuma, yeah. Just come and stand here. Come and tell me what lessons. Stand here. Tell me. One lesson you've learned. Um, look before you leap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So look before you leap. I don't know what that means, but you know. <laughs> One lesson they did teach you. The reason why, the problem is that because you're so hurt, you don't pay attention to the lesson they taught you. So another person will come and teach you the same lesson again. Because you will notice all the people that in your marriage is the same complaint. At work, it's the same complaint. Praise God. Okay, let's take two people that life taught you a very big lesson. You know, two, two persons, yeah. Yeah. No, no I, I want to take someone, a lady. There's a lady at the back, yeah. One. And another person again. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Um, so I don't know where exactly to start. I can't get into vivid details. But I was abused at age 12. And I suppressed the feelings for like 10 years. I couldn't open up and tell anybody about it. But after 10 years, I was hurt, obviously. I couldn't relate with people normally how I should. How do you used to relate with them? So I became very defensive. Okay. Whenever I built up walls around me, and if you try to break in too much, I just shut out completely. Okay. Um, so 10 years down the line, I opened up. I decided to let God in. I just let God take control. And in that, in that season, I learned that one thing I learned was that forgiveness is actually what you do for yourself. Wow. It may sound cliche sometimes. Usually when people say it, I'm like, you don't know what I've been through, so just out with it already. Um, it's really what you do for yourself. So after I decided to forgive the person who abused me, it felt like I had paved the path for myself. Wow. It felt like I had opened my door. Things became very clear. It became very vivid. <laughs> also, the turning point for me, I tell people this all the time, that 
I wouldn't have thought that Abakuk 2 verse 2 would have any impact in my life. But that was the turning point for me. When God said, write down your visions and make it plain on tablet, I journaled like my life depended on it. I would always write things down. I would always journal. Anytime I was feeling hurt, instead of just acting on it, I would write it down and then maybe sleep over it. When I wake up and go back to it, I'm like, ah, it's not even that deep. It's not, it's not really that deep. It was just how I felt in that moment. So I think the ultimate life lesson life taught me was forgiveness and journaling. You know, <laughs> what you just said, you've learned big lessons in life. If you can learn the act of writing now how you feel and coming back to it, deliverance has started. The reason why is that it's one of the biggest things just to write how you feel. Sometimes, even, and it's not for any, it's for everybody. The more you write how you feel, the more you, you, will, you will notice that this really nothing. It's, a circums, it's how I feel that made it turn out a certain way. Wow. In fact, if you're going to heal, one of the things you must do is that you must take note of the triggers and the emotions. And the way you take note of them is by what? Writing them down. Write them down, write the time. You'll be surprised that it has a pattern. Praise God. There's someone on the choir that wants to say something. So she led forgiveness. That's powerful. Life is teaching lessons. Over here. Good, yeah. after good afternoon, church. Yeah. Um, for me, I never paid attention to the signs. Um, I don't know. For me, related to love was blind or love is blind. So he had a pattern. I mean, my past relationship. That's my ex-boyfriend. He had a pattern that I never paid attention to it. He kept on doing it and doing it. And, you know, I'm like, mm, no, just... Let it be. Don't worry. I'm in love. I'm in love. People will come to tell me, are you not seeing? I'm in love. I'm in love. You know, I always had that thought in my mind. And um, we broke up. He came back again with that, the same pattern. So I never paid attention till I started noticing the pattern and the signs. So what he taught me, uh, what I learned about my past relationship and what I know now is to follow, not to pay attention to patterns and to, I, what I also learned is to actually pay attention to whatever signs, you know, he shows you because that is what would actually determine if he's somebody for you or not. Amen. Praise God. So the question is this, when things happen to you, are you learning? And it's a good way if you can write it down, what you're learning. So the Bible says, let's go back to the Bible reading. The Bible says, and the Lord saw that Leah was hated, and he opened her womb, and Rachel was what? Was barren. So you must always remember, there's a difference. See, this is what you must remember. There's a difference between how I feel and how things are. There are two different things. There's always a difference between how I feel and how things are. So you must remember, like I said, life is a school, and you're learning the lesson. Why do people that are divorced, why do they have lesser chances of good marriage? Because when people are divorced, most of the time, they don't learn the lesson. So they, they really think it's the other person. Meanwhile, they have a big part of it. And they think the solution is to marry another person. And guess what? The relationship will play out like it's played out before. And they have a higher rate of divorce because since they've crossed that line before, they can easily do what? Cross it again. So the Bible says that Rachel was, was, was barren. Verse 32 now. The Bible says this, And Leah conceived and bare a son, and she called his name Reuben. For she said, Surely the Lord had looked upon my affliction. So this is, this is where the wound started from. Because she was abandoned. It was a wound of abandonment. And when people have an emotional wound of abandonment, what they do is that, number one, they begin to do too much to be loved. And some people, you know, like she said, they don't know how to walk away when they see abuse. And the reason why that happened is that 
they are dealing with the emotional wound of what? Abandonment. So when people abandon, you find that it can manifest in different ways. It's like malaria. Number one, they can be very clingy. Number two, when people abandon, they can be very clingy. So when they find someone they love, they will saturate them, they will suffocate them, they will be so much into their space. The second thing is this, they can be very desperate. The third thing is this, they can be very I don't care. And the reason why is that, because it manifests in different ways. It depends on either it's possible or negative. I don't care because I've been abandoned, I'm used to it, why should you be there? And the fourth thing, they can just be, they can just be very defensive. For Leah here, Leah became desperate. She became so desperate. She began to, she became so desperate. She was using everything. For example, a lot of ladies that fall into the hands of guys that use them for money, all these fraud stars, you will notice that they have abandonment syndrome. Because they kind of know this guy is using me for money. But they don't mind. And they keep giving them the money. Keep giving them, because they're hoping that it will change in the process and love them for who? Yeah. But the guy is focused. He loves the purse, not you. The guy loves the purse. He loves the bank account. He doesn't love you. And as long as the bank account is there, he will keep doing that. Praise God. Look at what Leah did. The Bible says, And Leah conceived and bare a son and called his name Reuben. For she said, The Lord that looked upon my affliction, now therefore would my husband love me. There was always something to use to trade. The next verse, the Bible says, I shall conceive again and said, The Lord has heard me when I was eaten. He has therefore given me another son called Simeon. And it was all about using sons. It was like, you know, because this was the only age she had over Rachel. Guess what? The more she had children, the more the sympathy of Jacob went towards Rachel. Because Rachel was the one that did not have. So she was like, oh, why should I come and spend time with you? You have your kids with you. I should spend time with Rachel because Rachel is what? Alone. And that would even frustrate her more. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Are we getting blessed today? Are we getting blessed today? How do you know if your emotional wound is healing very well? Number one, you are less defensive when people touch it. You know, let me give you an example. Yeah, come, yeah, come, come. I can choose someone else if you feel shy to come. It's okay. I, I just like your, your green jeans. Can I use your glasses? Okay. Let me just check. But that's not why I called you. Do you have any wound in your body? Wound. wound. Yeah, something, something that aches. No. Nothing. But let's say your hand was aching you. Let's ask you. Watch this now. If I hit it, yeah. That response is defense. That's because the wound is still there. When people are emotionally wounded, once you touch the topic, once you touch the area, you will see them react. So you see them react. So the way you know you're healing is that, can we still talk about sex and rape and you're okay? Or does your voice start aggravating? You hear me say, I cannot marry a controlling man. Emotional issues. Because I'm not saying marry a controlling man, but why can't you just say, oh no, I can't date a controlling man. Why is there so much passion and anger towards it? Because it resonates to something within you. A man can never tell me to leave my job. Ah, I cannot marry a woman that has a nine to five. Eh? You know the thing? You are even being pained about someone you have not found. But the reason why you're like that way is because like this guy has an emotional wound. If I, so you have to respond. If I hit it, you know, there's a wound there already. So the reason why you're defensive is because the wound is there. So, you be, you, so any small thing you tell him or her, are you going to live to? Everybody leaves me. Are you going to live to? I don't trust anybody. Oh. These are, the, these are the, the ways you hear the signs of people that need healing. Are you, 
going to leave to? The guy has not left. The guy has not left. Why are you suggesting? If at some time you are the one that puts in their mind that they have to leave. I know somebody leaves. And the girl now says, hmm, somebody leaves you. Ah, it must be a reason why they leave you. I should also leave. Thank you. Praise God. I said, praise God. So, this is the way you will know if you need healing. If you know, for example now, some of you, maybe you're, you're divorced. When I say, are you married again? Ah, I better go. <laughs> what is ah, I better go? The reason why is that the wound is still fresh. And it's not, there's nothing wrong. It's not saying ignore it. It should just say that, okay, the wound is fresh. I need to heal. I need to do this. And I'll give another example. Someone says, oh, so are you going to date? Eh? Men, I would rather run. But, but the reason why you say that is because the wound is still what fresh. Hey, women, I would rather run. It's, it's still fresh. So those signs show that there's something that needs to heal. Is this helping someone today? This is how you know if you need healing. It shows that there's something that needs to heal. You know, so, so most of the time people are very... So, when people need healing, they are very defensive or reactive. It's two things. They're very defensive or they're very what? Reactive. They're very what? Reactive. Come on. They're very what? Defensive or they're very what? Reactive. Yeah. Yeah. So when, they, when you touch that area, you see them either react or become what? Very defensive. When people need emotional healing, one of the things you notice is that they cannot discuss that topic without emotional outburst. An emotional outburst does not mean they shout. They can just sink into depression. They just start crying. They just start crying. Sometimes emotional outburst that they say, <laughs> some will just go, did you just see that face? Okay, let's talk about relationship. Why are you not talking again? No, no, no. You can talk. No, no. And that's a passive emotional outburst. Sometimes it becomes aggressive and they just start crying. And, and I'm saying it so that if you need emotional healing, you can begin to identify yourself and say, maybe I'm struggling here. Okay, the third, the third one. The third one, and maybe I will close from there. The third one. Praise the Lord. When people need emotional healing, they find it very hard to admit they do. Most of the time, they always say, they're fine. How are you? Fine. Are you dealing with the prick of, I'm okay, I'm over it. But you're not over it, it's all over your face. Who knows what I'm talking about? They will talk about every other thing from what breaks their heart. When people in emotional, they will talk about what every other thing apart from what breaks their heart. Who can identify with any of these three? Any of these three? You say they can't identify. Who can identify with any of these three? Hands up. Okay, I'm not calling you. Just raise up your hands if you can identify. Praise God. I said, praise God. Okay, let me get two people to share. Who's going to share with me how this is working, how this resonates with you? You know, yeah. You, you want her to share? My friend? No, no, you want her to share? You want her, you want her to share? Okay, give her the microphone. Your friend thinks you have something to share. Yeah. Tell me what you think she has to share. Start it for her. St start it for her. Flags. What? The red flags she sees in her Okay, yeah, yeah. So, so, what do you think she has to share, yeah? So, um, you spoke about when people are, when people have emotional outbursts. I can relate to number three, because I just left a relationship, and <laughs> the relationship ended with, I did everything right, I prayed, I kept on letting, telling God to lead me, but the relationship ended with him calling me and saying, oh, it can't work, he's not interested in this our ideology doesn't match and I kept on asking myself what did I do wrong because it felt like everybody I've always been with left me at one point and I kept asking myself am I the problem is there something I need to change 
But now you talking about it makes me realize that I've not healed. I need to heal. I need to tell myself it's not, it's not my fault. It was never my fault. It wasn't my fault he left me. It's his decision. And I can't control people's decision. So, yeah. What's your name? Rita. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. It's okay to cry. It's okay. Crying is part of healing. Crying is part of... See, you know, sometimes like crying, you're like so in a hurry. Crying is part of healing. You know, fr- fr- crying is part of emotional regulation. It's just part of healing. I cry. And there's nothing wrong. I cry. Yeah. If you don't cry, you have a problem. <laughs> yeah. The reason why men don't cry is because men are thought from when they were young to suppress their emotion. That's why they most... To suppress all emotions. That's why the most prominent emotion that men manifest is anger. Because that's how suppressed emotion eventually comes out. Man it up! You will just raise a very angry man. Why do you think all the men that you did leave you? How many have you dated that have left you? Three. Three? Yeah. Okay. Do you know the average statistic says you have to date four people to get married? Well, some people date one and they get married. What? Some people date one and it works out for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but that one is just 10%. Yeah. When you went to secondary school, how many A's did you make? <laughs> Two. Two? <laughs> but some people made all A1s. Why did you make all A1s? <laughs> people that make all A1s, are they up to 2%? No. Why do you want to? So you were not even in the 2%. Same thing here. Let me tell you something, eh? understand process the reason why sometimes it takes you four or three people is that each of them is a lesson teacher <laughs> what are those that are married here and want to testify who is married here and you know what i'm talking about there were things that when you were dating the boy was useless so the game was useless but when you got married it was very useful in teaching you uh, anybody like that here? You're married? Where? Yeah, yeah, g- g- give, it, give her the microphone. Where's the person? You, okay. Yeah, come and stand here. Come, come and stand here. Yeah. Come and stand here. Yeah. Fa- face the mic. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. It's not working though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, for me, um, I- Can I see the microphone? I'm not, I can't hear you. Okay, you need to hold it closer to your mouth. So for me, I, I got married in, 20, um, in 2019, and I started... Dating. Can you hear him? Should I give my microphone? Okay, take my microphone. Yeah. Praise God. Okay, so I got married in 2019, and before then... Uh, I went to a mixed um, secondary school and I started dating at the age of 26. And between when I started dating and um, when I got married, when I checked back, I noticed that I had dated about seven different ladies. And sometimes, sometimes it was so hard for me uh, because even while I was in the higher institution, um, I got, I, I, I had this lady that I was like, this is all I needed to, this is the lady I was going to get married to. But it didn't work. At some point in time, I fell into depression. Then I was in Kanu State. And at some point in time, I just said, you know what? I'll just leave Kanu, just go to Jikawa, stay with my friend. Nobody can reach me and stuff like that. I found out that at that point in time, I thought that um, there was nothing like love. In fact, I was not just it at all. Not until I came to Lagos and... Let me, let me help you jumpstart that. I want you to talk. So when you got married, how did all of those things add up as lessons? Okay, so, um, so when I got married, I saw it was totally different. First, when I was dating my wife, it was issues upon issues. But when I got married, I, I noticed that everybody, they, are all, they have their own unique um, um, picture. I noticed that I could see someone who could give me better love than what I used to experience before. I now noticed that I now learned, I learned better to even give better. I, then I thought if I had to give, I would lose them. But then I noticed that I had the responsibility to give. I learned it better. I learned how to care for uh, my family. So the question I want to ask you is, I'm sorry for interrupting you again. Yes, sir. Your former relationships, yes, sir. 
which of them learned taught you something you use in this really in your marriage now? The, the, the last one I dated before I got married. What what, what did you learn? So so while uh, while I was dating her, I I, I noticed that um, I wasn't much always there for her basically. But when I got married, I realized that for me to always keep my home, I need to be there. I, I, I learned totally that even when I go <coughs> and travel from Lagos, outside Lagos to work, I ensure that every single day I have to be on the call with my wife to see my family, to understand how they do. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. That is very powerful. You know the thing? He had to lose a relationship to learn that. But that's what I'm saying to you. So the reason, so, so my sister, first of all, that ideology you have that you say like, oh wow, I did it four people and it's all lost. No, it's not. Life is a lesson. If I were you, you know what I would do? It's a loss, but what's my lesson? It might be, your lesson can be how you chose. Could have chosen better. Your lesson can be how you responded to issues. For example, some of you love too intensely. Do you know that? Yeah. And some of you, your love makes you complain a lot. It's not as if you complain a lot, but the person you are in love with, because you are trying to rework them into a mental picture. You are always complaining a lot. So if I were you, I would sit down and be like, you know, when I dated this guy, what, what did he talk about? And I would look at this and say, which one is him just talking? Which one is real? Praise God. Yep, yep, yep. So, so, you, so, you know, the more you feel as if someone left you, you'll feel a lot of pain. Let me, give you, let me help you with this. If you don't want to feel pain, learn to give good meaning to your experiences. No experience is good or bad. It's the meaning you give to it. They said, just because I going to die. Just because I said, no. I'm going to die that I'm a resurrect. He gave meaning to it. Oh, wow, resurrection. Oh, wow. Okay. 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 So, it's the meaning you give to it that matters. Some of you, you had a temporary relationship, but that's how you learned how to become very patient. Why are you laughing? Give her the microphone. <laughs> give her, give her the microphone. Why are you laughing? So, we... When you said, um, hey, some of you, it makes you very patient. It just makes me realize that I was not patient. I'm not a patient person, and I love too intensely. I want to do everything for you. I want you to love me how I love you, and all of that. So, so you want me to love like, you how I love you, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it feels like sometimes, probably I'm choking them, wow. and I'm not, I'm not a patient person, but yeah. I'm learning how to be. So do you have that heartbreak to change that? <laughs> no, please. Because if you don't learn now, then another person will come. Yeah. Then you learn that time. Yeah. So you can choose to learn without heartbreak. All right. Praise Th God. Thank you, Pastor B. Amen. Amen. All right. Another one as we close. Yeah. Yeah, she want to say something. Oh, there's a lady over there. Let's give that lady, you know, yeah. You, 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 are, you are close up front here. No man wants to talk today. Oh, we had a man that spoke already. Oh, there's a man on the other side. Yeah, give it, give it, give it. Give. Yeah, go ahead. Good afternoon, church. Oh, please, church. just have one minute. Don't go. Yes, let's go. Yeah, good afternoon, church. Uh, I think um, I relate to what you talked about uh, when you mentioned um, issue of, um, the issue of abandonment. And um, I have been struggling with it because um, I think it's with the issue of my mom. When my mom left... And I know I've not really healed. And when I go into relationships... What age did your mom leave you guys? What age did your mom leave? As far as I can remember was when I was um, six, seven, five, six, seven. Between five and seven years old. Yes. And we grew up um, mostly without her. And when I go into relationships, I just um, want to give that motherly love to the person. And I love just too intense. I become like their mother and <laughs> try to forgive whatever, like I try to um, forgive whatever they do and 
what like like what she said like choke them with love and and i i happen to meet narcissists because of that I, like i happen to just meet narcissists and i recently just ended um, one relationship and it really taught me to so let me ask you which problem you or them which problem you or them him in the aspect of lying what is the problem you or them no, even in the aspect of lying, but so when of I find lying. out, yes, yes, he lied. Lie, 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 lie. He <laughs> <laughs> lied a lot. Oh, okay, hold on. I think the problem, the reason why is that every relationship there's a you part of it. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think the problem is you, in a way, is also them in a way. Why is you? Is because you attract who you are. So because you have what in psychology or emotionalism is called mother's wound it's called the mother's wound you attract people oh, yes. that make the wound worse exactly pastor i think so thank you <laughs> that's true yeah you, you attract, attract people that make the wound worse but the thing is that this is the way it works there'll be five guys here two will have mother's wound you'll leave the ones that are whole and look for the other's wound and say yeah the one i love and i'm saying so because until you change you will find that that see some people are genuinely attracted to disaster It's not, it's the reason why is that you are the one that thinks you choose who to marry. Who you choose is a, is a programming. You marry your parents, your brother, your siblings. You don't know. Look carefully. The people you marry is someone exactly around your family. You know why? It's, you know why? You cannot marry what you're not familiar with. It will be distant. It will be crazy. It will, that's why most daughters don't like their mother-in-law. You know why? Because most daughter-in-law are to a replica of the mother-in-law. So the two of them cannot agree. Praise God. Yeah. Because when the man was looking, he loved the mother so much. He married son like the mother. And the way it works is that two people that are alike. Very difficult. So the mother is very finicky. So he married again that's very finicky. So when the mother comes to the house and says, ah, why have you not said, why have you not done that? Because I'm very, you know, mm, mm. And if your mother was a woman that was jaye, 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 the man married a jaye, jaye woman. You know, because this is a younger version of the mother, the jaye will be expensive. It will be high pro 14 pro max. So, when the mother is still doing iPhone 10, so when the mother comes, say, hey, See how you are spending my mom, mom son. Uh, what's this? If we are spending, I'm spending it. Let us spend it together. <laughs> Praise God. That's why, listen to me, everybody. That's why, listen to me. That's why you need to heal. Because most people choose their relationship of a place of malfunction. It's like, have you seen a car that is alignment to not balance? Once you leave the car, it's just going this way. It's not saying that's where the man is going to. It's going this way. And that's why some of you are. Once you are, you are in relationship, you just be going by default to trouble. Just be going to trouble. Just be going to trouble. Just, uh, just be going to trouble. Praise God. So how do you really change things? How do you change things? A simple way is this. The Bible says that. So you got here because of exposure. How do you change it? Exposure. The first exposure I'll say is God's word. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 2. The Bible says, be renewed by the transformation of your mind. The second thing is that, get, put yourself in the environment of things you want to see. Look for family that are full of love and get close to them. And begin to reorientate yourself through exposure. There are men here that will struggle to feed and take care of their wives. You know why? Because they never saw their father do it. It's not saying they don't have the money. Just master for the father. So what you do is to step back a little and say, "How can I look?" And that's why you must go to a cell. You must go to a department and look for people. Some of you, you are in a relationship that they don't have sex. Ah, you can't even imagine you have a boyfriend that doesn't have sex. It's not when you date some other people you don't say, "Ah, you know, Pastor Luke now is doing Pastor Luke. She's doing her fortieth uh, birthday Thanksgiving today." They were giving me the testimony of, you know, 
how their wedding night was so nice. <laughs> because before wedding night, they were not allowed to do. But someone said, is that possible? You know, um, I was saying one of our leaders in church got married. And, you know, and uh, I was saying, you know, they got married. He said, ah! He said, Pastor, they must have done everything. I said, no. He said, Pastor, what would they tell you? What would they tell you? Even myself, what would I tell you? <laughs> but, the reason, but the reason why the person thinks that way is because of that's the way the person is. So what you need to do is to expose yourself to new environments. All of you that are married, the biggest gift you can give your partner in marriage is to have family friends that have good marriages. It will help you. Because you will learn things without knowing. Without knowing, just learn. But I see how you just learn. Praise God. And if you want to destroy your family, have friends that their family is not good. They will teach your husband bad things. They will teach your wife bad things. They will pass it to your children. Praise God. I said praise God. So the first thing you have to do, so the first thing you have to do is to begin to really ask yourself, am I struggling with an emotional wound? If she wanted to say something, just give her the microphone. You know, because I've not asked her to talk, you know. Yeah, you know, you know, I'm not sure that emotional one. The second thing is that, how can I renew my mind? Number two, what relationship can I be in that can? Some of you, you just need a father figure. That's all. Some of you just need male friends that there's no, nothing attached. Because you don't know how to behave around guys. Once you see guys, you think they, they all want sex. That's the truth. Once you see guys, you think they all want sex. You don't know how to just be okay. So you yourself, you start behaving in a funny way. I don't want to come to your house. So me and you alone. You know, ah! They can't be like, ah, what is it with you? Why is your mind going this way? Hope you know that people that are born again and still by their friends, please, are nothing happen. That are not born again, they're not born again, no. Because the guys, the guy, they get like that party, nothing. No. I'm not saying practice, so. Uh -huh. Yeah. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Uh, mine is actually my career. Yeah. Um, I never had, I didn't have a support for my family concerning my career. So most times they would, when I said, okay, I have a production, I'm going to go. I was learning, I was in a company that I'm learning. And they would say, you know, my brother would say, where are you going? Where are you going? There's a man on the road waiting for you. That's why you're going, Abby. I would say, no, this is, even then when I go to church, you, why would you, why can't you go to church only on Sunday? Why are you going Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you know? All, all those attacks and sometimes they will have a meeting and say please speak to your sister he said he's doing dancing he said he's doing acting so tell us what is your plan then i was maybe maybe 13 or maybe i was like 17 18 what's your plan tell us but i realized that it wasn't they were not asking me because we want to know your plan and maybe we'll support you it was an attack of um to dismiss it before I could even open my mouth to explain the plan, it will shut you down immediately. So now, fast forward. Um, I remember one time I was having a uh, presentation. One more minute, yeah. <laughs> with Unilever, and they were asking me about the production, what I intend to do with the production. And I found myself in the middle of the presentation. I started crying, and I lost that project because I thought they were attacked, attacking me again. Wow. And then, another further, further, I had an interview, a documentary. I thought I've healed. That's the thing. I thought, ah, oh, those were forgotten about. I moved on. My career is great. Hallelujah. And then they were interviewing me, and then they started talking about. So, what's your plan? This, what's the plan? So they didn't I support you. Why didn't they support? And I, I realized I was just tearing. Did you see what I said? So when people deal with emotional wound, once you touch that part, they just begin to respond differently. Some people, some people will start crying. Some people will talk a lot. Some people will just go quiet. Look at me, everybody. The most important conversations in life are never had. Put it somewhere. The most important conversation in life are never had. And you are here. I know what I'm talking about. There's someone you have to talk to, but you're not talking. So we have to talk to your mom, your dad, your ex, your boyfriend, your husband, your wife, and you refuse to talk. And once you start talking, there'll be no healing. Let me help with this. Let me help with this. 
So your brother would, they would just fight you a lot. Yeah, like they will call family meeting. You, you know, your yeah. perspective is that they are trying to suppress you. Should I tell you what it really is? Should I shock you? They are afraid, you, they are afraid of failure. It's fear. Every time people cannot put their thoughts in a linear expression, at the root of it is failure. They were afraid you will fail and become a responsibility and liability to them. That was why they were saying that. I, I found out eventually, now that I'm healed and I saw it, I, I see that. I even forgive them because I realized they were afraid, just like you said. They were afraid. They were afraid, but yeah. They were when afraid people are afraid, you will see that they have no points, but they are under tension. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, let's stand up and pray.